What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be showing you how to 3D print onto fabric. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be showing you how to 3D print directly onto fabric. And to be clear, I'm not talking about 3D printing some sort of chainmail patterns that are flexible. I'm talking about actually embedding fabric into your 3D prints. Now this is a great option if you're interested in creating cosplay props, Halloween costumes, or just making your prints a little bit more sturdy but still flexible. Before we get started, if you're interested in learning new 3D printing techniques or how to make awesome electronics projects, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of my new videos. Now the process of 3D printing onto fabric is incredibly simple, and if done right will result in your parts being attached to the fabric better than any glue or adhesives could manage. Now I haven't tested this with every type of fabric, but I found that tool or cheesecloth or Under Armour like materials it adheres really well to. So you shouldn't have any trouble getting your parts to stick to whatever fabric you choose, but if you do choose a fabric that's too thick, you might have to skip a few layers in the slicer to account for the thickness of the material. To get started, open Cura, click the extensions drop down on the menu bar, and select post processing, modify G-code. The window that opens up will have a drop down to add a script which offers several options for pausing your print. If your printer is one of the options that's offered, go ahead and select the one that applies. Unfortunately, the i3 Mega didn't work with any of these scripts because it doesn't handle the M0 command correctly. So it would pause, but then I was unable to resume it from the touchscreen on the printer. These built-in scripts seem to work fine if I'm printing from Octoprint, but if I'm printing from an SD card, it still seems to get hung up. I was able to resume the prints anyways because my i3 Mega can resume after power loss, so I would just cycle the power and resume the print. But I didn't want to have to do that every single time. Fortunately, I found a script on Thingiverse that was specifically for the i3 Mega. Essentially, this script just holds the printer in a position for long enough for me to be able to press pause and then I'm able to resume the print when I'm ready. On the other hand, it was based off of an older version of Cura's built-in script, so it didn't handle the z-axis correctly. When it would resume, it didn't return to the correct height and so the print would fail. To fix this, I just copied Cura's newest version of the script and merged in the changes from the Python script I found online. I've linked both my script and the one that I found on Thingiverse in the description below, so be sure to check those out. If you're using an i3 Mega and you want to install this script, copy the Python file into Cura's scripts folder, which you can find in the description below. Once you've got the script copied into the scripts folder, restart Cura for your changes to take effect. With Cura open again, return to the post-processing scripts window, and in the dropdown you should now see the Anycubic script. When you select a script, it will open a form on the right for you to configure it to your needs. For my print, I'm going to have it pause at a specific layer rather than a height. I'll tell the print head to return down to 0 on the x-axis and 190 on the y-axis. This should be enough to get the print head out of the way so we can lay down the fabric. With the script configured the way you want it, close out of that window and import the file you want to print into Cura. Slice it like you would for any other print and save it to a file. All that's left to do now is start the print and wait for it to pause. Now if you're using the i3 Mega script, you need to be close to your printer so you can press pause when the printer beeps. If you don't press pause within the amount of time you set, it'll just resume the print. Once your print is paused, it's time to lay down the fabric. The best method I found for this was using some small neodymium magnets. The magnets seemed to do a great job of holding the fabric tightly in place, and they were small enough that they stayed out of the way of any moving parts on the printer. If you don't have any magnets, binder clips will also work. They don't seem to hold the fabric quite as tightly, but they'll get the job done. With the fabric in place, go ahead and continue the print by pressing the button on your printer. If you're printing from Octoprint, click resume on the left side of the screen. It might take some trial and error to get the fabric laid down in a way that doesn't catch on the print head as it's moving around, but if you do it right, your print should continue like there's no fabric there at all. Now you could repeat this process over and over if you wanted to make a larger pattern, or you could sew it onto some clothing if you wanted to make some sort of a costume. Now before I let you go, I wanted to share some things for you to watch out for. These are things that have tripped me up along the way, and I think by sharing them I could save you a lot of time, filament, and even damage to your 3D printer. First, when you're applying a post-processing script to anything in Cura, make sure to go back in and delete that script, otherwise you might come back to a print that's been going for hours and realize it paused hours ago. Second, if you don't have any magnets to secure the fabric to the print bed, make sure that whatever else you use is small enough that it doesn't run into any stationary parts on the printer. If, for example, you're using binder clips that are too large and they catch on something on the printer, they could prevent the bed from moving and offset your entire print. Also, make sure the clips don't come into contact with the actual print head because that could damage it. 
The last thing on this list is to make sure you don't move the print bed when you're securing the fabric to it. In my first attempt at printing on a fabric, I accidentally moved the print bed. I decided to rehome everything thinking that this would solve the problem. Instead, when I resumed my print, it thought it was at the same spot that it paused, so it tried to move itself back down to the print, which happened to be my print bed. It managed to scratch its way around the bed for a little bit before I was able to pause the print. Luckily, it didn't cause a lot of damage, but it doesn't look very good on my print bed. And that's it, there you have it. That's my entire process of 3D printing onto fabric. If you liked this video and you wanna give it a try, make sure to check out the links in the description for all the products that I use. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video and if you have any suggestions. Also, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. That's all for now, thanks for watching.